St. Louis all the time. Like, we dealing with a real dirty <coughs> devil here when you come to St. Louis police because we talking about the same police force. They used to sit you in the back of a squad van, put a phone book over your head, and beat you with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. Just so the bruises wouldn't bring up, yeah. but you'll still have the same damage. You know, like, it's dirty. Um, I was at this action organizing meeting because I like going to see what other people are organizing and planning and strategizing just to hurt. Um, it was like, yeah, we're going to do a jail solidarity thing where we go into the jail and we just all sitting there chatting in jail. And we, I say, what? I say, yo, that's the dumbest thing ever in the world you can do. You want to go up in the jail and sit up here and chant and solid dirty. Okay, first and foremost, if you're in the city, they're going to take you and put you in these things that they call pies, which is just little rooms where they stuff 50, 60, 70 people. Really? Yeah, 80, however many they can fit in there. People sleeping all on the floor, standing up, whatever. Sometimes you don't need to be spot the moves. You got to sit there, you know? And so they put you in these rooms, right? All these people in there, and they would come in and block the door with two guards with riot shirts shields and then it'll be two guards coming over them spraying the whole room with pepper spray. Pepper spray. Yeah. yeah. And I ain't talking about the little personalized mm -hmm. cans. Big cans. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the hornet cans. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, they'd tear up the whole room and start pulling people out one by one and beating them as they trying to give them medical attention. And some of them people you won't see come back, they end up getting charged with something else or something dumb just to keep them in there until they heal up. Yeah. It'd be so real. Like, I just, like, you know, I just got caught up in a case last year. And it was actually a free case because I had a fight, right? I had a fight with these two guys. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after the fight, I walked off. Like, you know, because it was, um, the conversation started. They, you know, they started calling me niggers, which was already, you know, I was already fired up in a whole other situation. So when I'm in another situation, I wasn't thinking clearly. Right. So, yeah, they start calling me niggas and calling me out of my name, and we ended up having a fight. Now, three weeks later after this fight, you know, because I had to fight, and I walked off, and I went home, slept it off, didn't think nothing about it. Three weeks later, I got three city police coming out to the county to come pick me up. Wow. And then they get me in the car. Before they get me in the car, they ask me in front of my friends on the basketball court, um, how you want to do this? You want to do this out here, or you want to do it in the court? And I said, if I'm under arrest, you might as well put me in the car, and let's roll. So they put me in handcuffs, put me in the court. So I'm like, I'm guessing I'm under arrest. They tell me some, some yeah, tell us about this robbery you committed. And I'm like, robbery? But what robbery are you talking about? They're like, um, yeah, young, you was on, you was here on this day and this day, and there was two white boys there, and you was on the bus. So they short, they started showing me pictures of me on the bus, and I'm like, yeah, I was on the bus, um, and I had a fight that night, you know, but like. Robbery, like what you mean, like robbery, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I was on the bus and I had a fight, but I didn't rob nobody. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't even put me in the scene. Like I don't like I had a fight before I even, you know what I'm saying, got to where I was going. So like you you trying to tell me that I robbed these guys. And so anyway, as as it goes on and the story goes on, they put me in the lineup. I had long hair. They put me in the lineup with three people who were shorter than me. All of them had short haircuts. So, you know, and come to find out, the witness couldn't point me out in the picture lineup seven days earlier. But when it comes to a physical lineup seven days later, after you've already seen this picture lineup of me, you couldn't point me out of You point me out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ended up going, and I did like four months on that, and then I got probation off of that. Yeah. But it was like the whole point that, you know, the officer even sat there and told me, you're not going to be there. There's no way you're going to beat this. I know you don't have the money for a lawyer and this and that. And I'm just like, man. What the, what the fuck? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Like, you know, and then like you, you claiming I robbed somebody, you ain't got no proof. You got no video proof. You know? It's all circumstantial. It's all circumstantial. Cut a, cut, a, cut a deal and we'll... We'll let you go. After four months. <laughs> after four months. Because you got to wait to get indicted. Right. And then you got to you gotta um, wait for your trial. I mean, wait for them to sentence you. Right. Um... Speaking of that, we, what, 109 days in to these protests? Mm -hmm. They indicted me in 39 days. <laughs> and we're 109 days in, and they don't even know if they're going to indict Darren Wilson or not, and they indicted me in 39 days. They didn't know if they was going to charge me yet, but I was definitely indicted in 39 days. That's crazy.